webinar will be um, presented um, by Joanna Gripari, who will do the, the, the presentation of the, the Open Air Monitoring Institutional Dashboard and, um, and will show you the, the, the features and the recent developments uh, made in this service. And um, Leonida Pispiringas uh, from Open Air will do the, the demo of, of this service for you to, to get more acquainted uh, on how to use it. So uh, I would I will also like to um, raise um, and give you give you some some um, news from our, the, our um, next webinar that will happen on the 13th of July and it will be on the another open air service users counts the users statistics service of open air. So if you want and to know more about this and the recent developments made by this service, please join us. You can go to open air uh, portal on, on the webinar section and you can uh, already uh, register yourself. So after the webinar, we will have a Q&A session where you can address your questions and comments to the speakers. And uh, now I give the floor to Joanna and, um, and Leonidas. Thank you so much. Hi, thank you, Paula. So as Paula said, my name is uh, Joanna Gripari. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm a former econometrician and current uh, data product owner at open air, which means that I worry about indicators and data all the time, every day. And uh, I will give a brief presentation about the service and then uh, Leonidas, who is the institutional dashboard guru, is going to give you a live demo. And hopefully nothing will crash. <laughs> okay, so let's start. I'm assuming you can see my screen. So the open air uh, monitor, it can be found at uh, monitor.openair.eu. It is a monitoring service, big surprise. So uh, the goal, the, the, when we built the service, uh, we wanted, uh, wanted it to be used for the monitoring and evaluation of research activities uh, in a reliable, consistent and timely manner. Uh, so that uh, the users can understand the research funding pathways along different dimensions of interest, assess the open science policy uptake and uh, the impact that they have, uh, the, the research activities have on the society as a whole, uh, see what works and what not, uh, identify you know, weak spots, reveal hidden potential, implement good practices, showcasing their performance, for example, to funders or to other policymakers, and uh, turn, basic, turn all the data that we have in open air uh, into insights uh, in an automated way, of course, uh, to lead to evidence-based decision-making. Uh, and uh, I guess that for everyone who is interested in a monitoring platform, these are the key points that uh, have to be addressed. So we built the platform trying our best to satisfy all of this uh, so that the platform can be used for uh, monitoring and decision making, analysis, and then storytelling and uh, reporting. So there are three types of uh, dashboards in the open air monitor that are on demand in the sense that you have to tell us that you want one. Uh, the institutional dashboard, which is, will be the focus today. Uh, we have 12 dashboards already and nine more on the way. And Leonidas is the co-design expert. And we also have different types of dashboards dedicated to research initiatives and uh, to funders where for research initiatives, uh, research communities, Alessia Bardi is the uh, expert and uh, Harry Dimitropoulos takes care of everything related to funders. Uh, so we separate the, the people uh, among the different types of dashboards to really have uh, build expertise on the needs of the particular type of organization. Uh, so the, the guiding principles, it's, it's of course, since it's open air, it's all about open data. 
And our guiding principles are openness, usability, and replicability. So what is the monitor? It is a data and visualization monitoring platform, which is, it is built up on the open air research graph, which includes linked scholarly communications from around the world. And it has different research outputs besides publications. So data, software, and other research products. It is based on open science principles. Uh, which means open data sources, open APIs, uh, well-documented metrics and indicators. We have a dedicated methodology page that we keep, uh, we keep building and improving uh, on the monitor so one can easily see how something is constructed. And also uh, on the one-to-one -one sessions that we have, uh, we, we try to make sure that we cover all the aspects that are relevant for an institution. So we try to meet the community requirements for the different types of dashboards. Basically, our main aim is to build trust in our indicators and our data. Okay. All right. So what is it exactly? So it is a, we, try, we think it is a user-friendly data and visualization platform. Uh, and I'm going to list some functionalities that we have. I will summarize them here to give you an idea, and then Leonidas will present them in detail in the demo. So there are exporting capabilities. So the data and visualization can be downloaded uh, for analysis, uh, to put it in reports. It can also be embedded in uh, other websites, so you know, for showcasing and stuff. There are filtering functionalities so that the entire set of indicators is filtered by a particular aspect. There is the research product browsing. Uh, what does this mean? It means that uh, there is an area in the platform where you can see individually the research outputs of an institution that are behind the indicators. So someone is viewing, so you see, let's say a timeline. There is a jump in a particular year. You can go to this section, to that particular year, and see all the research outputs that are in open air for your institution for that year that have been used in the calculation of the indicator, um, of all the indicators. And then see if something is missing, what's causing the jump, and so on, and, and download that table as well. Um, and there is a, a partial editing of visualizations. And I mean partial because you cannot affect the data that we show, right? Um, so this, uh, pardon me. Uh, so this dashboard, it's customized and validated in one-on-one -on -one sections with the experts. Now, the, the level of contact is up to you. Uh, so our experience so far shows that we have um, one one-to-one -one session where we present the different functionalities again and show the indicators and then receive feedback if additional indicators or visualization should be shown. And then after the, the dashboard manager or the user has had the chance to play with the dashboard, we usually have another session to discuss uh, data the data quality. Uh, sometimes, for example, the main note is that a particular data source is missing, and then we add it, and then it shows up there, and so on. Um, and then there can be additional exchanges if needed, but uh, usually uh, after two or three, we have a stable dashboard that people are using. There are each indicator slash visualization can have one of three settings that the user themselves decides after logging in. It can be public. So that so these are indicators that would be used for showcasing. So you tell a potential funder, please go see it, look at my dashboard over there, and you can see what I have done in the last years and so on. There are restricted indicators where someone has to sign in and be invited by you to view them. Uh, so these are usually used for teams. So you, the manager invites the team uh, members by email, and then they have access to this restricted set of indicators. And then there are private indicators that are for work in progress. Okay, so the, they're not shown to anywhere besides the institutional manager. So what we do from our side, when there are new indicators, uh, we upload them in the, the profiles. Uh, the manager is notified. 
and they can uh, change the setting of the indicators if they like them they can uh, change them to public to show to showcase to the rest of the world and so on but they receive a notification and uh, um, okay and then one is obviously able to play with the public dashboards of the other stakeholders if they wish Okay, in terms of the indicator themes, uh, I'm not going to go over all the indicators uh, that we cover, although in the next month, there will, besides viewing a dashboard, you will be able to go to a particular, to the resources part of monitor and download a full set of indicators, uh, which will be with their definitions and construction, which will be useful, we believe. So currently we have indicators with respect to funding, so grants, projects, and so on for an institution. There is different types of research outputs. Open science, where we cover fairness, access rights, access routes, article processing charges, and journal business models. Networks and collaborations. Right now we have some stuff with respect to funded publications, but there's more coming. And the impact, uh, where right now we discuss, we have indicators with respect to reach and frequency uh, that have to do with the uh, downloads from different resources, uh, sources and so on. Um, the roadmap for indicators that will be completed by early fall 2022 is first of all, we have uh, a set of uh, improvements suggested by the users of the monitor for the particular ones that we have already. So we're working on this. Then we have a set of indicators on Plan S compliance, indicators that include UN Sustainable Development Goals, so research output by goals and so on, and indicators uh, that include different uh, fields of science uh, done to FOS level three at this point. Okay, now, um, in order to really understand what's going on and reveal these weak spots and make uh, decisions, uh, we provide visualizations that break down the indicators by different aspects of interest. Um, if additional aspects of interest uh, are required, so different metadata elements for the breakdown, this can be very easily added because we have a tool that we use internally to create the uh, indicators directly on open, uh, from the open air graph. So some of the breakdowns that we have now is the research activity type. Uh, so publications, data sets, software and projects, uh, time, different data sources, different organizations, uh, top journals and so on. Just uh, the ones that you will see in the demo are just uh, an example of the ones that previous users have found interesting. Uh, but this can be augmented. The data behind the indicator. So priority number one, let's make sure we show something that makes sense. So for those of you that uh, didn't know already, so we show the data that is uh, of the open air research graph, as I saw before. Uh, and here, this picture represents the pipeline of the open air research graph. <laughs> So there is aggregation from uh, different major resources, sorry, sources, uh, which is then deduplicated so that um, different records of the same publication, for example, are merged into one. And you are a always able to access all of the records, like the, the original instances, as we call them, they do not disappear. Then uh, this is enriched with additional metadata via text mining. Okay, these are cleaned and then they are ready for statistical analysis, which is what you see in monitor and our fellow monitoring service, the Open Science Observatory. And also indexes, which is what you see in Explore and uh, other, other services as well and other places. Okay. Extremely important for the institutional dashboard is uh, organization disambiguation. So in the metadata of uh, research output records, we view one particular organization with lots and lots of different names. And uh, this changes, the, the, the number of names keeps increasing um, as we merge more and more records. 
So what did we do? We developed uh, this open orgs tool, which is super easy. Um, you go and it, you enter your organization, for example, organization name, and then it automatically presents all the duplicates. So organizations that almost have the same name, you go and you say, okay, this is a duplicate, this is a duplicate, and you validate it quickly. And then we have also added, and by we, I mean our friends at CMR, but in open air, uh, you are also able to identify the parent-child relationship. So you're able to say that uh, University of Athens is a parent, uh, Department of Economics, University of Athens is the child. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the minute yes. this is validated, yeah. when the curation is complete, it immediately goes to the next round of update of the open air research grant. Which means that the institutional dashboard that is created with one uh, organization ID will now contain the information of all the different uh, alternative names that the organization was showing up as. Um, so in order to do this deduplication, we ask managers of the institutional dashboard to do it as well as not. So on June 28th at uh, 11 a.m. CST, we will have a training of how to do this, where you can also, if you, if you would like to have an institutional dashboard, we will give you access and so on. Uh, the presentation includes the Zoom link. And uh, you can see how you do it. This massively improves uh, the data available at the dashboard because we show, we take all the outputs that are and put it to the right organization together. Okay. So just the last thing to say before we move to the demo is that, uh, as we said before, our priority is uh, data quality. And uh, of course the indicator quality as well. So we want we work closely with the users of a dashboard to make sure that all the major research output outlets are uh, integrated into open air, that the project outputs are correctly identified. So we have data, we have in open air right now 25 funders and we're increasing the numbers and we're using inference to track uh, from acknowledgements in footnotes and so on. Uh, to track project outputs even after the project ends. And we do, there is a, a quality verification with the funders themselves as well, validation, curation, let's say. Uh, we link the different research products. So, so one is able to see the links between a preprint and a publication and data and software if it all comes together. And also uh, one can verify if, um, their all all their uh, output is is correctly uh, counted in the output of the country as well uh, because a lot of uh, users are using open air in order to, to look at country level uh, indicators as well um, so we make uh, we make a lot of effort into this uh, into data quality and uh, we welcome our users to work together with us on this um, the monitoring uh, dashboard makes it easy to do so because you can see a breakdown by, for example, by content providers and one can easily identify if something is missing. And we make it so that the records are duplicated, cleaned and visible to you and searchable. Um, so we really, we really want to build trust on this uh, indicator to make the dashboards uh, useful. So I spoke enough. Uh, let's move uh, to the demo and there's a link you can see in the slides uh, where you can access a, a public dashboard as well. Thank you. Leonida? Thank you, Joanna, for your presentation. So now we will uh, proceed to the to the demo of the institutional uh, dashboard from the, the monitor from the open air monitor service. Okay, here we see the home page of uh, the open air monitor. First of all, we will log in. 
with your institutional account. I'm performing the login with my open air account. And then by click, clicking browse, you will have the, the list of uh, the organizations that are included, the, that have a dashboard in the open air monitor service. We are interested in the institutional dashboard here. And then you can find, find the, your institution. And by clicking manage, As a dashboard manager, you go to the admin web page of your institution, where you have three tabs, the general tab, where there is information about your institution, such as the name, some internal information that cannot be editable, such as the alias and index ID that comes from open orgs, index name and index short name. Here you can change the name for your institution, for your profile, and you can also add a description here for your institution. And you can upload the file or have a URL for the log of your institution. And of course, you can also set the status, the visibility status of the dashboard, where as you wanna, mentioned in her presentation, there are three types, the public status of the, the profile, the restricted and, and, and the private status. The same levels also exist in uh, the indicators tab where we will discuss it uh, right after. Now, uh, before we go to the indicators tab, let's see the users tab. Well, here there are two level of use, two user levels: the managers and the members. The the dashboard managers are the administrators of the institutional dashboard, and they can uh, perform all the functionalities that we are describing uh, in this uh, in this demo. Uh, they can also invite other users to become managers or members. Members are users that uh, are able only to see indicators and categories that uh, are in a restricted mode. And here you can, uh, as a manager, you can uh, invite other users of your institutions. Uh, for example, uh, the team you want to create for uh, the internal monitoring of the indicators of your institution. So on the indicators tab, we have the main five, the five main categories, as Joanna mentioned in her presentation, which are funding, research output, open science, collaborations, and impact. Uh, let me mention here that uh, each of these main categories can be set to public restricted or private, as long as any other category and subcategory in each tab, and of course in each indicator, and uh, the hierarchy uh, follows uh, is, uh, and the the level the set uh, the level of the the status level the status follows an hierarchy. For example, if we set the funding category here to private. There is no, no one will, will be able to see except for the institutional managers will be able to see the indicators, all the internal categories of this, or the subcategories of the category funding, even if you set them all to public or private. So let's continue to the first category, the funding, where we have uh, the project's information and the overview and horizon 2020 grants tabs. In the overview tab, 
we have uh, two number indicators regarding the institution's project participations and the institution's, institution's project participation in the European Commission. Follow up in the graph charts, we have the project participations of the institution by funder and the project participations of the institutions, uh, the European Commission project participations of the institutions over time for the FP7 and the Horizon 2020. Uh, let me mention here that uh, all the graphs are interactive. Uh, here, for example, you can hide any set of uh, information from the uh, labels of the graph. You can also set each indicator restricted, private or public, as we mentioned earlier. Additionally, by clicking, clicking edit on one indicator, you have the option to change the title of the graph. And also you can write a, a description of the graph. For example, if there is a, in a specific chart, uh, you see a, a large jump uh, on the data from year to year, and you have some internal information from your institution that can justify this jump, you can write it down in order to inform your users why you see this uh, jump in the chart. And then when you hover over, hover over the chart, you can see the description. You can also change the status. You can also change other information such as the width, <laughs> the height of the chart. And also you can change the chart type. To, uh, to buy line or bar accordingly. Well, let's continue to the description of the indicators. Well, apart from the project participation by funder, we also present the project participations and research output by the number of projects and by type of research output that is produced by the projects. We mean by projects with publications, projects with software, with data sets and other research product. We also have the project publications by open access route. Go green open access, gold open access, hybrid and bronze open access. And we also have the four charts with the top projects by number of uh, the research outputs, which are publications, data sets, software, and other research products that are produced and are affiliated to the institution. In the Horizon 2020 grants, as a number indicator, we have the Horizon 2020 project participations of the institution. We have the total project funding in Euro, and we also have the average per project funding on the Horizon 2020. We present the project participation by pillar and by programs, and we also present the top programs, the top 20 programs of the Horizon 2020. And we also present the project funding, the project funding by pillar, as long as the top Horizon 2020 programs by project funding. And also the average per project funding over time and the top Horizon 2020 projects by total project, fu project funding. 
Uh, here I, I must mention that, uh, I should mention that uh, data, the data has been created from the European Commission. That the data is current and uh, there is a constant data exchange between Open Air and the European Commission. And also we are in the process of incorporating the Horizon Europe project metadata, uh, which, are, which is around uh, 1,500 projects. So let's continue to the research output. Category we have, where we have the publications, data sets, software, and other research products accordingly. We have as a number indicator the total number of publications of the of the, of the institution. We present the publications by type, the number of publications over time. the number of publications by data source type, which have been aggregated by a specific data source type and are found in a data source type. And also we have the top data sources by number of publications. And also the top journals by number of publications. And accordingly, we present the information for the data sets. By type, over time, by data source, and the top data sources. Here we have only one data set registered for the specific institution. On the software tab, as you can see, there is no software for this institution. And in other research products, we present accordingly the same information. Of course, here we don't have the top uh, journals because uh, we are not uh, discussing about publications. Following up the open science category, where we have uh, the open access subcategory and the fairness. At the open access, uh, in the access rights tab, we present the number indicator, the, the number indicators part. We present the number of open uh, the number of research outcomes by access rights. Research outcomes are all the publications, data set software, and other research products. For some reason, the numbers are not shown here. No, this is strange because. And here you can see an important information that uh, the number of uh, the closed access publications for uh, University of Göttingen are almost the same as the number of uh, open access publications. Which means that uh, Open Air also aggregates information regarding and metadata regarding uh, closed access publications. Okay, regarding the, now the charts indicators, we have the publication, we present the publication by access rights, open access, closed access, embargo and restricted. We also have the data sets, software and other research products by access rights. And we also have a, a chart, we, we present the same, but over time. 
for each year as long according to the information we have aggregated. In the open access routes tab, we present the publications by open access route, green open access, gold, hybrid, and bronze open access. The same information, but over time here. And also, and also here, uh, we have uh, the green open access separated by the gold hybrid and bronze open access in order for you to see the level of the difference between the numbers of these uh, publications. We also have the published open access VS the deposited open access over time. The deposit open access is the green open access publications. Where we have the published only, the deposited open access only, and we have the publications that are also published and deposited open access. And then we present four charts from the for the with the top journals by the corresponding access route. Top journal by gold, hybrid, bronze, and green open access publications. In the transformative, transformative journal tabs, tab, we present the publications that are in transformative journals, have been published in transformative journals over time both open access and non-open access publications. And in the diamond open access and article processing charges APCs, at the number of indicators, we have the publications with article processing charge, the number of publications with article processing charges and the number of diamond open access publications which are the ones without article processing charges. In the charge indicators, we also present the information of open access and uh, with APCs and diamond open access publications over time. Here, uh, we see that there are diamond open access publications, but the there are a few, very few diamond open access publications in numbers regarding the open access with APCs. That is why you cannot see the bar, the, the colored bar in the whole chart, but the, in the interactivity of the graph helps you separate and see the numbers that you want. And we also have the top journals by number of publications with article processing charges and the top diamond open access journals by number of publications. On the fairness category, we have six tabs regarding the position identifiers, the abstracts, ORCID IDs, CC licenses, funding reference, and duplicates. On the pages and identifiers tab, we should present the research outcomes, the whole number of research outcomes, and then the ones that have a position identifier. We have the publications by PID type, the ones that have a DOI, handle, PubMed, central ID, and others, and the same information regarding data set, software, and other research products. At the abstract tab, we have the publications that have abstract or not in their metadata. 
and the same information presented over time for each year. At the Orchidides tab, we have the publications with at least one Orchid ID and the, the ones with which does not have, do not have an Orchid ID. The same information here presented over time. And accordingly, the same information regarding data set software and wherever this information is available. In the CC license tab, we present the open access publications which have, which have a CC license and the ones that do not have a CC license, the same information over time. And accordingly, the same information for data sets and software. And the same information here on the project publications with funding reference in the metadata or without the funding reference the same information over time and accordingly for data sets and software. And finally, we have the duplicates tab. Where we have, we present the number of copies that are available for publications in the open air research graph. And of course, these are potentially different versions of uh, the same publication. For example, um, this might be a preprint or postprint version. And we have the number of publications with one copy, with two copies, three copies, and all of the same information is for data sets, software, and other research products. So in the collaboration tab, we have the collaborations via project participations. On the publication tab, we have we present the co-funded project publications over time via funders. where we have the publications that are funded by zero or one funder and the ones that are funded by more than one funders. And we also present the co-funded project publications over time via project participations. And the separation here is uh, the categories are the participation to none or one project and participation to more than one project. And we also have the collaborating countries by number of funded publications. We present it in a world map here, where the map is zoomable, of course. And by hovering on a country, you can see the number of publications from the specific collaborating country. And we have the same information for data sets, software, and other research projects accordingly. And finally, the last category, the impact category, where we have the, for now, we have the research frequency subcategory and the downloads, which have been which are used uh, by the Open Air's usage count service. And we have uh, the categories, the SDGs and the citations are uh, soon to come and to be presented here. Well, as a number indicator, we have 
the total number of the publications, the total downloads, and the average downloads per publication. In the chart indicators, firstly, we see the downloads per publications over time by year of download, where we present the average download publica per publications by the year that the download has been made. And next, there is the downloads per publication but uh, over time, of course, but here we have uh, the downloads per publications are counted by the year of the publication that the, that the publication has been published, not the year of download. Following, we have the downloads per publications, per publication by project participation over time. project particip participation to zero or one projects and the co-funded publications, which are publications that have been participated to more than one project. We also present the download the publication with abstract over time by year of publication. Then we have the repositories downloads per publication by access rights. We have the open access and the closed access publication. These are uh, downloads from repositories. For example, the closed access are uh, publications that are uh, closed access are uh, published in a, in a journal. And uh, a version of this uh, publication has been found and downloaded from a repository as a preprint or postprint. And this is very important information for the institution. We also present the same information here over time. Then we have the downloads per publication by open access route. Similarly, we have the green, gold hybrid and bronze open access. And the same information over time. Also, we present the top journals by number of downloads per publication from repositories. And also the top journals by number of downloads from repositories. You also have the charts of downloads per publication by open by access rights, which are the open and closed access, and the downloads by open access by access rights accordingly. And the same information as above, but this time over time from 2007 until 2021. So these are the indicators, indicators that are currently presented in an institutional dashboard. Uh, I must tell you that uh, when we add open air adds new a new indicator, this will be included in the bottom of the corresponding section that it will be added, and it will not change the interface as you might have already customized it through the admin interface. And the, the default setting for uh, each new indicator is uh, the restricted setting, meaning that uh, the repository manager, the, repo the institutional, the dashboard manager and the members, the registered members will be able to see the new indicator. And you will receive a notification in the, in your, in the app, in the monitor service, where if, when you log in the notification window is shown in the right part of the of the page here, where well, myself as a, because I'm an administrator, I have a, a lot of notification notifications here. 
I must also show you the filtering functionality, which is uh, it's not visible in the admin, interf admin, admin interface, but only but in the institution's profile. This is a page of uh, the institutional dashboard uh, where a user, uh, whether it's public or restricted, can see the corresponding information that we have just described. Uh, here in the right side of the page, you have a filtering uh, ability of uh, having a restriction between the years in the corresponding graphs. You can put any number you want, or you can select for example, the last five years. And all, all the charts that include, that have information over time. We have the filter that we have just put for years. Also, with the option search research outcomes, you will be shown with a, uh, a, search, a, a search functionality uh, inside the research outcomes that uh, are privileged are shown in the institutional dashboard. You can find here all the publications, data sets, software, and other research products that are shown in the dashboard here. And finally, we have a methodology page where we have the terminology and construction. It is constantly updated with the information. For example, we have uh, we describe each term from the publication research outcome publication data set from uh, from here to even the green, gold, hybrid, and bronze open access. information or also for the downloads. So uh, this was the demo of the dashboard, of the institutional dashboard. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Leonidas and Joanna for, for your presentation and demo of this, uh, of the, of this service. Uh, and now can institutions and okay, can institution access to these specific indicators to 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 monitor open science so i see that joanna was very active in the chat so most of the questions were already answered but um and some of the of the participants are already leaving so we are just on time um, but um, for the ones who are here and have some question to address to the speakers, please do open your microphone and and just um, say your question or comment. Um, does anyone want to raise a question? Uh, yes, there is a question from yes. uh, Ru. How is it preserved if we create a new indicator on each indicator's page? Uh, perhaps you can speak up, we can clarify the question a little bit, please. Hello? Okay, I think the question is, uh, if, if we go and add an indicator, how is the shape of the profile remain the same? Uh, if this is the question, then the answer is that if there is new indicators, they go in the bottom of the profile. 
And again, it is not viewed publicly, right? Because they have to be approved by the institutional manager. And then the institutional manager can just move it wherever they want or leave it private so uh, it doesn't, uh, it's not shown to the dashboard. Oh, can you? Um, uh -huh. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there were some buttons that, uh, or, uh, on each indicator's page, like create uh, plus mark and create a new pay, new indicator. And when we push that button, a new window will appear. And if we make a graph or a uh, indicator and then is it pre preserved automatically uh, on this page or uh, we should uh, restore on on local <coughs> local machine <coughs> Lanita, well, Lanita, do you want yes, to for, for now Yes, uh, for now, this functionality is not uh, enabled for the <laughs> dashboard manager, meaning that you cannot create your own indicator. If you want a new indicator, indicator you can contact us. <coughs> we have a meeting and okay. we discuss it and then we create okay. it for you. <coughs> okay, I understand. Uh, okay. Actually, we have a redesign that is going to be pushed to production in the next month and this feature will not be there. All right, thank you very much. Okay. Um, does anyone else? Um, uh, there is another question. question. Okay. Uh, how is the total number of publications calculated? Are those all publications written by authors from this institution or only those publications which are archived in, in repositories? So we have in uh, the, as you see, as you maybe saw in uh, Leonidas uh, demo, um, we have about 50% for the particular dashboard we show closed publications. So these are taken from uh, journal aggregators and, uh, uh, and other sources. So the, uh, the affiliation is in the metadata of uh, e either the repositories or the journal. If it is the journal, it is the author affiliation. If it is the repositories, we assign it to the institution uh, only if uh, it is an institutional repository. Okay. I hope this answers the question. Uh, uh, then, uh, um, okay, if, if, it's, if it's okay for Bogen, then uh, Maurice is saying that they're happy, <laughs> they don't have to figure out what to do with the JSON files. Yes, you don't have to do anything with the indicators. The functionality will not be there because uh, in any case, someone, it's for us to deal with, so no worries. Anything else? Okay. Congratulations, very good job. <laughs> so um, thank you so much. I already shared a link for to get your opinion and evaluation form of this webinar and please give us suggestions and comments for future activity or webinar, public webinars that Open Air will organize. And uh, taking this in consideration, I'll share again the link for our next public webinar uh, on the 13th of July. So if you have interest, it will be about the user's count service uh, that is also used in this uh, monitor institutional dashboard and in another services that Open Air provides. So thank you all once again. Uh, for being all year and thank you Leonidas and Joanna for your uh, great presentation and we'll see you in our next public webinar so see you soon goodbye